All right, so welcome you guys. Uh, so uh, you guys already know the rules. Uh, the topic for the benefit of the audience is drug use and or abuse of drugs should be treated as a mental health issue rather than a criminal offense. Uh, we have uh, two speakers uh, proposing this motion and two people two people opposing this. The the two uh, proposing the motion are uh, Shoma Jyoti and Ave. Uh, and on the opposition, we have Vidyu Chattopadhyay and Pranav Bhandari. So, uh, uh, we'll start with the first speaker of the proposition, which is Shoma Jyoti. Uh, you'll be getting two minutes at the start and one minute at the end uh, to refute the rest of the arguments. Wait, am I the first speaker on this? Uh, yes, you are the first speaker. Okay, just give me 30 seconds and go through the wording of the topic on WhatsApp once, right? All right. Exactly. All right. All right. All right. So after that break, uh, so uh, we have Shoma Jyoti going uh, going first. You have uh, two minutes for the first part of your speech. Uh, yeah. With that being said, Shoma Jyoti, the floor is yours. All right. So very good evening to one all present. Uh, Shoma Jyoti Sarkar today stand with the dogmatic assertion in form defense of the motion. Drug use or and or or abuse should be considered more as a like mental health issue rather than a criminal offense. So ladies and gentlemen, what first we must keep in mind that when we talk about drug use, as the topic very much suggests, there are two cat two basic concepts of it. First is the use, and second is the abuse. Now, uh, ladies and uh, now, now, gentlemen, what we must keep in mind that when we talk about abuse, we have to keep in mind that how much is it affecting the uh, you? How much is it is it affecting the people around apart from the user? How much it is affecting the society? Whether the user or the person who is under the influence of drugs is uh, causing any kind of violence or any kind of misbehavior to anyone around, and that is exactly where the point of uh, it being considered as a criminal offense comes into play. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, uh, gentlemen, here we are arguing about um, whether the use or abuse as a mental health issue or a criminal offense. Uh, sure. I so much with the wrap up. And I strongly feel that this is considered as a mental health issue simply because when a person is under the influence of drugs, it is that person uh, doesn't do things, the, the, that person is under a lot of mental trauma and doesn't do things voluntarily. It, it uh, so he, because his voluntary instincts uh, completely go mute. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, so much, uh, I think uh, that's all, all the right. time we have for you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Shoma Jyoti. With that, I think we'll be moving on to the questions. Uh, is there anyone with a question on this speech? Uh, yeah, Pranav. Uh, so Shoma Jyoti, you spoke about how when somebody under the influence of drugs. Their voluntary, the actions are not voluntary, right? Because they they are pretty much out of their senses. But when they choose to abuse those drugs, when they choose to take that path of act, that line of action is a voluntary action, right? and that is a criminal offense, drug substance abuse. So how do you justify that? How do you bring in the the yeah. concept of involuntary yeah. action? Yeah. So so when I'm talking about use of drugs, a person who is uh, under the influence of drugs, uh, drugs initially does not know the enormity of the consequence that might happen uh, due to the use or abuse of uh, the thing he's using or abusing. So the person, so that's why I said that it, it should be regarded more as a mental health issue because that person is going on to mental trauma. He might not initially choose to cause any harm to anyone when he is about to use it, but after he uses it, he is no longer in his senses. That's why he initially doesn't know the enormity of the consequence he might cause after he uses or abuses it. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Vidya or Arth, do either of you have a question on the speech? Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't have any questions. All right. All right. Uh, well, with uh, so I think we were done with the speech and uh, Shoma Jyoti, you'll get another minute at the end at yeah, the end, uh, uh, and uh, I think we'll move on to the next speaker, who is the first speaker of the opposition to this motion, who is Vidyut Chattopadhyay. Vidyut, uh, for the first part of your speech, you have two minutes, and your time starts right. now. <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, when we are talking about drug use and abuse, the proposition puts up an argument that, you know, the person does not make a sort of a willful decision when it comes to drug use. But what you have to understand is that when you talk about environmental factors, 
or environmental factors or mental health issues which force you into drug abuse. It's no longer drug use or abuse, it's called addiction. There's a clear demarcation between that. What you need to understand is that if we put a stricter restriction on the use, on the supply and the demand of drugs, you can reduce the amount of effects or the, ba uh, the bad effects that drugs can cause. Secondly, the issue with legalizing or decriminalizing, uh, decriminalizing drugs by treating drug use and abuse as a mental health issue, what you're doing is creating a lot of logistical issues. It's like saying tobacco and alcohol is legal, is legal to use, but only for adults. But at this stage, you have to understand that this sort of law is extremely difficult to you know, enforce. You cannot go on. Uh, we've hardly seen people who are below. We've a lot of times seen a lot of people below the age of 18 who use drugs, use alcohol, and uh, they smoke. So the logistical part of it plays a huge issue when it comes to thinking about drug use abuse. What you also need to understand is that by treating it as a mental health issue and opening up the doors to people saying that yes, drugs, you can use them as much as you want as long as you don't have a mental health issue, you are basically opening up the gates for a lot of people to become literal junkies. This is because what you need to understand is that you are giving them an entire legal source. The reason why drug use is considered illegal because the very drug is illegal. And that is why, because of the effects that particular drug had on society by the people, that is why it was made illegal in the first place. Let us not make the mistakes of go retracing our steps back, legalizing uh, drugs. Did you wrap because up? that is exactly what we don't want to do. I, right. Lastly, what I would like to say, concluding statement, all is right. that never mind. Never mind. All it's right, not. all right. Uh, thank you, Vidyut. Uh, and we'll now be moving on to the questions. Uh, seeing as there's one, okay, uh, we'll start with Vidyut. We'll start with Ave and then move on to Shomajuti. Uh, Ave, your question. So you said that if you treat drug drug use and abuse as a mental health issue and uh, rather than a legal or a criminal issue, you provide you're allowing people a legal supply to the drug. Sir, when we say that drug use and abuse should be treated as a mental health issue rather than a criminal offense, we're not saying that drug sale and trafficking of drugs should be considered uh, should not be considered a criminal offense. How can you equate those two? How can you say that this motion means that? Let me clarify on my end. If I wasn't, will not be a criminal. Clear offense. enough, right? Uh, let me clarify on my end then, if I have been misunderstood. What I'm saying is that once you start considering drug use and abuse as a mental health issue, sooner or later, the argument for the decriminalization for drugs will follow suit. It is inevitable. If you start treating it as a mental health issue, mental health issues can be treated. In, in other words, you could completely treat you know, drug addiction and you could make, make thousands of studies and say that, yes, we can find a cure for drug addiction, therefore go ahead and use drugs. So in, invariably, you are opening up the gates for making drug use uh, legal. Uh, right. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ava. Uh, we have the second question for Vidyut now, uh, which is from Shoma Jude. Your question. Yes. So, so when you clearly mentioned, uh, first of all, the, uh, the, as the topic suggested about drug use or abuse, and you mentioned about drug addiction, which is still fine to an extent, but when you mention about cutting out, uh, cutting on the demand and supply, uh, thus uh, putting the finger on the drug dealers, basically who might not even be ab users or abusers of drugs and simply be drug dealers out of poverty issues. So how do you justify that um, the drug dealers or their demand and supply is actually discussing that is actually even relevant to the uh, given topic? Uh, I'm sorry if, again, if I have been misunderstood, I just made reference to the supply of drugs and, you know, controlling the supply of drugs to reduce the overall use of drugs by the citizens themselves. The demand, the supply, both play a role. If there is a consumer, there has to be a supplier. It wasn't the crux of my statement. My crux of my statement was the logistical issues and what uh, decriminalization of drug use would act obviously lead to. Uh, all right. I don't think there's a follow-up required to this. It seems pretty evident what the answer is. Art, uh, do you would do you have a question to the speech? All right. 
So I think it's uh, best that we move on uh, to the next speaker, which is uh, Ave from the proposition side. Ave, uh, you have the full three minutes for your speech uh, for this part of your for the uh, for your speech, and uh, yeah, the floor is yours. Okay, so let me begin by responding to what Pranav said in his question. He said that he said, and I quote, "When people choose to abuse drugs, now." People don't choose to abuse drugs. When people use drugs, the drugs physically, this is scientific, people, drugs physically change the brain and create a compulsive drive to continue using while inhibiting normal decision-making abilities. We need to remove this stigma against drug users. People think that they continue using drugs and use a large amount of drugs because they want to. But in reality, it's because they, they, they have become hooked onto the drugs and they can't survive without it. Furthermore, once people try such drugs and they get used to them, they can't stop because it changes the chemistry of their brains. Now, when we're looking at this motion, it says drug use and abuse should be treated as a mental health issue rather than a criminal offense. It in no way suggests that the sale or trafficking of drugs should be made legal. What I'm trying, uh, my point is that the government should try to punish the dealers of drugs and the kingpins who are, who are exploiting these drug, uh, these drug users rather than the drug users themselves. Now, my uh, when you treat drug, uh, when you treat drug uh, use as a mental health issue, uh, you allow people, uh, rather than a criminal offense, you allow drug users to come forward and seek help because drug users don't want to be addicted to something. They don't want to keep going back to something which they know is ruining their lives. They want to make a change in their lives, and we should allow by make, treating it as a mental health issue. We'll be allowing them a pathway to come out of this addiction and leave, lead a much better life of their own rather than throwing them in the jail for no fault of their own. Is right. that it? Yep. Yeah. All right. I have a question for the moderator. Uh, uh, yes. If, yes. If, um, if the other speaker from opposition doesn't mind, can I take both the questions? If he doesn't uh, mind. Uh, if, if, you're, uh, if the other speaker doesn't mind, then sure, I would. it's okay. Would you, may I take both the questions? Your mic is muted. Uh, just, 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 I, I yeah. do have a question. Oh, okay. No, then no, I think... I'll take one. You take one. Fair All right. Um, I, actually, so I we, also, we hmm. also had a provision for like a third question from Arth or I, or I if it was required. So I think you hmm. can ask your questions. So yeah, um, I think we we'll yeah, take... But before uh, that... Yeah. Yeah, before that, uh, reminding the participants, this debating style, the panel debating style, will get you points if you ask questions and if you don't ask questions right. then you don't get points for the questions because there's right. a separate marking column for how you ask questions yeah so your question right. matters so, so shoot fine so may you i ask a question me. now yes yeah you yes can. right okay in your speech you mentioned that um thank you for your speech by the way you mentioned that we should work on punishing punishing those suppliers rather than you know basically that was your main point over there right because this motion does not mean that the supply of drugs will increase when the usage of drugs increases, it inevitably means that in the economy, the supply of drug comes in, drugs come in, right? So going on the lines of prevention is better than cure. How do you ensure that the supply and the flow of drugs does not increase? And, and how, what is the practicality behind addressing those drug suppliers? How do you, how do you prevent that? Uh, could we wait for Arth to join back his... Uh, yeah, one second. Fine. All right, so we'll just uh, wait while Arth returns. But yeah, ask your question. I'm listening. Uh, uh, you can answer the question. I'm listening. Over. Okay, so basically, uh, the point behind your question was that if you allow people to hide behind the wall of mental health, the drug use and therefore the drug supply will increase. Allow, by allowing drug use to be considered a mental health issue rather than a criminal offense, you're allowing people a path toward recovery from drug use and thereby reducing the amount of people who are actually using or abusing drugs, therefore reducing the supply of drugs rather than increasing it. All right. Uh, does that answer your question, Prana? Uh, I will address it in my speech. Thank you. All right. Because uh, I, I can continue. Uh, can I add to that answer? Uh, one line. Want, one line. One line. Yeah, so, uh, okay, it's fine. Uh, just let him ask his next question. All right. I think we'll take Vidyut's question and come back. Yeah. Yeah. Once again. yeah. Uh, so, sir, you talked about how it should be, uh, le it should be legal to sell drugs, but drug use should not be illegal. 
so then would you say the same thing about prostitution would you say that it's legal to for you know sell yourself for money but it's illegal to buy it in some states would you say that the similar parallels can be drawn for sex addicts for anything sir i don't understand how that in any way is relevant to the motion no, and how any answer i would give would add to this debate uh, okay, can i can uh, i can, can i add, add to that answer Oh, oh no no! Uh, can I just clarify why it's important? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I understand what you. He doesn't mind. One second, one second. Uh, with you, you so, can clarify. Uh, with... I, I understand. Yeah. So what you need to understand that the base of the entire argument that we can see for drug use and drug abuse is mental health issues. Similar thing can be said about prostitution. Similar thing can be said about sex. Uh, you know, selling yourself for sex. Yeah. Right. It's very similar Can I answer to that? Just different parameters. Sir, sir, I, I don't. I'd like. I'd I, like Abhay to answer this. Exactly. Hmm, uh, Arts, did you hear that question? Okay. Okay. Just answer now. Yeah, I, I still don't. Uh, I I don't think that uh, prostitution and uh, the the various things you brought up are in any way relevant to today's debate. The debate is only talking about drug use and abuse, not about prostitution or anything else. I don't think that comes anywhere near the purview of this motion. That's that's his answer. With Can you, I just sir. follow up then? Can I just uh, have a follow up? Yeah, sure, sure. Can I add on to uh, that answer? Uh, I I don't. uh let vidyu make us follow up and then we'll decide uh okay fine uh if you don't understand then uh, can you answer this it might seem irrelevant to you but if you can answer this question all everything will make sense do you think that even prostitution can also be linked to mental health illness like people who are forced into selling themselves for sex can that also be surrounding environmental factors and mental health issues sir i'm not going to talk about that because it's not relevant to today's motion if you explain how it all is right, relevant all right fine answer answer all right all right i, I it's uh, i've heard the question and the answer so i'll we'll consider that right. so abhi one of the oh my question right yeah 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 go on hmm. so abhi one of the basic defenses uh, you had for the people who might be using drugs or abusing drugs was firstly that this happens for a particular reason because they might be dealing with mental health issues and secondly if they want if they want reform in their life then they should be allowed to do that rather than putting them behind bars right now i'd like to draw a parallel here in the in the viewpoint of a criminal his his reasons are justified and even if after that he would like to make he would like to rectify himself he still has to serve time because that is what the law specifies right so so how do you justify drug use being given exception to this whatever your reason was please explain me that so my reason is that when people first use drugs they are either pressured into it through peer pressure they think it's school they think it would affect them in a negative way they think it will be fun but once they go down that 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 rabbit hole it's very difficult to come back out of it because once you uh, once you use drugs your it, it alters your brain chemistry in a way which makes you need that substance in order to carry out your life normally in order for you to feel normal and if you don't allow these people a path back a path back into a normal life and force them to go behind bars it's only going to ruin their lives further all right uh, i i don't think there's any more requirement for a line of questioning here uh, so i think we'll just move on to our next speaker without you know delaying right. because uh, we're suffering through some time constraint we'll move on to uh, pranav okay. bhandari the second speaker uh, the second speaker of the opposition uh, pranav you have, uh, right. yes you are audible you have uh, three minutes on the clock your time starts now right a oh, very good evening to one and all present here i'd like to begin by saying that this motion for today is a great concept for a utopian society but the impracticality and the aspect of implementation it, it rules out all possibilities of this being implemented simply because the shift in the judicial aspect would be it would be too monumental to contain right because the um, primary concern here is around treating drug abuse and mental health right and you must understand that abuse also comes into the play over here so you are providing too many loopholes that could be exploited right this is not something contained obviously that there there is a minor positive aspect to it but the downfall simply outweigh the positives by too much secondly drugs are already prescribed 
or mental health issues and drug abuse here is what we are trying to address because that is a criminal offense strictly outside the purview of the law drug usage is permitted for and it is already prescribed for mental health right secondly it is an isolated point of view when you choose to take on the path of drugs single every single crime has a justification in the mind of the criminal before it is committed once it is committed it is the it is the duty of the judiciary to ensure that it is judged with an unbiased point of view now that unbiased point of view cannot be compromised simply by saying we had these x and y issues and that is exactly why they went into this line of drug abuse and that is why we must provide them this exception over here now lastly the flow of drugs that will increase in the economies when abuse will be allowed to be um to be as an exception for mental health drug use and abuse both are mentioned in this motion for today and the second speaker of side proposition himself had given us an example where people inevitably end up going into the line of drug usage or drug abuse let's say through peer pressure now this exactly shows us how easy it would be to have access to these drugs you as an individual when you support this motion cannot ensure that this economy does not uh, not yeah i it over inevitably and this like rest my case but not my chance all right uh, thank you uh, pranav uh, strong case you made there uh, i think we'll move on uh, move on to questions uh, i think we only see question. one from shoma jyoti shoma jyoti your question uh, yeah so so when you uh, sir going by the topic it's drug use or abuse being actually considered as a mental use and or or abuse being considered as a case of mental health issue or um, as a case towards criminal proceedings and uh, considered as criminal offense now when you speak against the motion uh, your your stance should have been completely neither drug use nor drug drug abuse but in your answer you clearly mentioned that drug use is fine but the problem when it comes is for drug abuse so in which dialect or in which language are these two statements not contradictory to the stance Thanks. oh so when you are when you are this is a very this is a very real practical debate when you are weighing a motion you weigh the pros against the cons it does not need to be sitting on two polar opposites there can be positive aspects to a certain motion you simply go against the motion when the downfalls outweigh the positive aspects and i know basically how your questions are question your how your questions are yeah and if i if i may like just add as a this bit of a side note you added one part about uh what his stance should have been right i don't think there really exactly. uh, counts here because uh, each person has their own interpretation of a stance and that is how they choose to present it but anyway uh, i think we'll uh, seeing as there are no further questions on his, on pranav's speech uh, oh other okay, okay. yes other okay. uh, yes go yeah so you said sir in your uh, towards the end of your speech you said that if people if we decriminalize the usage of drugs then people will have an unlimited supply of drugs and they'll continue to use it and they will keep uh, they, they then it will lead to more drug addiction right sir why do you believe that they will have such an unlimited supply of drugs when we're not legalizing the trafficking or the sale of drugs the trafficking or the sale of drugs will still be a criminal offense and criminal action will still be taking a, taken against these uh, against the people who you, who are selling and trafficking so thank you so okay. first of all i know where my speech said unlimited i like you to not twist my words secondly sir even today it is a criminal offense to be selling drugs but even today we have an illegal supply of drugs in our economy especially in our country when when you provide a loophole to the user there will be more demand this is simply economics when the demand increases the supply increases the supply already exists today there are already loopholes to escape the law it is happening in real time today simply what will happen demand increases supply increases very simple right right that's it i think we won't be pursuing this line of questioning any further and we'll move on to the next speech uh, which are the the two one minute uh, one minute uh, refute uh, speeches for uh, shomaj jyoti i think we'll just move on to the speeches for now and uh, the next uh, next speech on the list is uh, is of course yes yours uh, shomaj jyoti you have one minute on the clock uh, and yeah your time starts now
So, gentlemen, it gives me immense pain to express how members of the side opposition have completely misled us on discussions pertaining to the this uh, this particular topic, and therefore I must say that side opposition has completely failed today, because uh, today uh, we hear a speaker from the opposition coming and comparing drug abuse to prostitution, he, um, comparing uh, substance abuse to abuse of a human being. Now, now considering the fact when you when when you speak about prostitution. You are mentioning about it's a web and, and you mentioned about sex addicts is basically prostitution involves sex workers of poverty who, who are in deep poverty to sell their bodies or to earn a living. And it is between two people on the consent and, and by exchange of money. You cannot compare that to have a diverse effect on the society because that's that stays confined between two people. A person who is a sex addict and um, believes in the con concept of prostitution won't go out there tomorrow being a rapist or being a sex trafficker. You nowhere mention about that. Uh, so much is, today's motion is drug use or drug abuse, which might have a very uh, which might have a toxic effect on the en entire society, and that's exactly the point of discussion. Whether it be considered as a mental health issue or a criminal offense, and members of the opposition are trying to uh, mention today that people, drug, uh, drug, drug addicts may, or uh, drug users or abusers may use that as a camouflage yeah. of that um, of, 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 of the mental it. health issue, and therefore, and therefore they must be considered yeah, 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 yeah. criminal it. That's it. Um, one sec. Uh, all right. So we'll now be moving on to questioning. All right. So uh, we uh, we're going to continue with uh, the questioning on. Um, Shomajati's speech. Uh, who uh, also who are except for the speaker, everyone mute the mic. Yeah, it's hard to uh, hear. All right. Uh, so I think uh, yeah. Does anyone have a question? I have one. Shomajati yeah. also mute the mic. Yeah. Carry on with this. All right. So first of all, sir, you talked about in your speech how like. In prostitution, there are other environmental factors because people are poor. That's why they go into prostitution. But don't you think the similar case stands for drug abuse? People don't have any source of recreation and they indulge in drug abuse. And that invariably is illegal at the same time. So how do these two contradictory statements while you're trying to simplify your argument? Um, right. So much did you catch? Uh, sir, uh, when I mention about prostitution, I heard you. Okay. So, um, sir, when you mentioned about prostitution, when I mentioned about prostitution and sex workers uh, who have to sell their bodies in order to earn a living, you cannot simply compare it to drug addicts or drug users or abusers who, while using or abusing drugs, they don't earn, earn, earn any money. I'm not talking about drug dealers who sell drugs and earn for a living. I'm talking about more topic here mentions about drug users or abusers. or uh, who are the upcoming drug addicts? Okay, so they don't earn anything by doing that. So how can you even compare that to sex workers who do right. it for earning a daily living for themselves and their family? Right, right, and right. Does I think we got the money? answer there. I think we got the answer there. Uh, and I don't uh, see any reason to pursue this line of questioning any further unless Arth has a question. Um, so yeah, I think we'll move on to the uh, to the final speech after which uh, we have a question in store uh, for the entire house to respond to. All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, the last speech uh, is from Vidyut for his uh, chance to refute the points made. Vidyut, you have one minute, and the floor is yours. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we see is that the proposition says that anytime somebody uses drugs, it's because of peer pressure or environmental factors and invariably mental health issues. What you need to understand is that not everybody who uses drugs will have mental health issues pre-existing. What you need to understand is that the very use of drugs is illegal because the drug itself is illegal. That is the very crux of the situation which the proposition has failed to understand. What the proposition also states is the very first time you use drugs, your entire brain, chemical composition, everything changes. That is true for drug addiction, not for the first time when you use drugs. This is, there is a reason why the soldiers who returned from Vietnam, who used heroin to survive throughout the war, did not come back home to America to be all addicts or junkies. There is a reason because the environment was different. 
what you also need to understand you cannot neglect the legality of it whenever mental health issue comes into the scenario you cannot simply ignore the legal uh did you wrap up well all right concluding statement you yeah, cannot sorry. exclude the legal aspect because there would be havoc there would be chaos everywhere because anything and everything could practically be justified or rationalized through forged medical documents right right that's it that's it that's so it that's it all right yeah 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 thank you vidyut all right with uh, that speech uh, being said uh, does anyone have a question on this uh, speech uh seeing as there are none i think it's best that we uh move on uh, to the question to the house which arth will mention or oh, if oh, and if it hasn't been mentioned earlier arth has returned to the our third uh, debate as not to, not as a participant but as a judge by my side uh, so yes uh, thank you for joining in arth uh arth are you there right just a second me? just a second for the benefit of the house can the can the speaker repeat the last line because that was in order with oh you. uh he was uh, he mentioned yeah or no yeah with you carry on uh i so think the mute the your last, mic i think the last line of my speech was about how the basically the crux of it that the use of drugs itself is illegal because the drug is illegal that's how i concluded Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the drug is illegal, it's uh, chosen. Right? The use yeah. itself. You cannot so exclude the question. legal aspect of it through the uh, through the medical health aspect. You cannot ignore the legal part of it as well, just by saying it's a mental health issue. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. I think. Right. So question. Oh, okay. You have a question. All right. Carry on. Yes. Uh, back uh, some back in your own speech when you mentioned about medically uh, prescribed drugs um, when you mentioned that they can often be used for pleasure or they can often be was the crux of your argument and you also mentioned that um, drug use or abuse when i mentioned that it depends upon whether the person becomes an addict and whether that has a violent use of society or whether that affects the society in some manner only that can be through uh, criminal proceedings and you very clearly mentioned that use or abuse means they person drug addicts affecting the society even in medically 100% prescribed drugs and um uh, uh, it's such a tone that it as if it is so much of the pleasure, with how uh, is uh, now your statement question not a speech con- contradictory to argue question is how is all right this i understand i understand suddenly contradictory right. to your initial argument right uh, your uh-huh. answer All right. Firstly, the point is, when you have medically prescribed drugs, the drug is no longer illegal. It becomes a legal prescribed drug. Firstly, secondly, when you use drugs of the street, most probably in most and probably all probability, it is going to be an illegal source of drug. So that is why the the statement still holds that until and unless the very source or the supply or the drug itself. if it is illegal fine then the drug use can be legal but the thing is that when you have drugs being swept off the streets when you have drugs being sold by drug dealers and everything then in that case yes of course drug use is illegal because the drug itself is illegal and ergo a criminal offense end of story i don't think there is any requirement for you to follow um uh, i don't think it's necessary just think... one just one small question fine one line no more No, 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 no. It's not required. One it's line, not required. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, just one line. Just one line. So, I... sir, uh, uh, speak, speaking on legal terms, uh, when speaking on legal terms, when a doctor prescribes drugs, he specifies the particular thing. Say on this oil from the medical source, and you think the person buys it suppose zero point two five mg by getting the form of zero point two five mg of a particular drug, and he uses only. uh i i don't think that question was i don't think that question was audible because of network issues that it wasn't audible it wasn't audible 
and uh, I think for the benefit of the house, it's better that we don't allow that yeah, question in the first I, place because the answer was pretty clear. Yeah, I completely agree because uh, from the little bit that I could hear, it was it was more like a different question altogether. So, uh, with that in mind, exactly. I think we do not see the point in the discussion. Uh, uh, can we move on? Question to the house. Yeah, the yeah. amount of the that is moderator. Good. Can we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah perfect. So perfect. Uh, that that is the question to the house. Right. Uh, I uh, we will not be pursuing uh, any line of questioning onto this speech anymore. We'll be moving on uh, to the question that uh, our judge, uh, my co-judge Art, has to the house. Art, over to you. Yeah. So first question being, what do you about the glorification of drugs being a huge role? Because we know there are singers like Kurt Cobain and many other singers. Which is why are people of our age being, using drug or being a druggie is quote unquote cool. There is a huge glorification of drugs when we talk about it, right? And since we know about the influence, people influencing other people, we have watched the movie Sanju. There are certain people who influence certain people, even if they do not intend to be us. So, what do you think about that? I just want a line of discourse on these two questions posed to the house. So, speakers wishing wishing to oh, speak. Good. Can you just repeat that? Uh, I I couldn't hear you. My uh, internet is pretty bad. Yeah, show me the mute your mic. Show me the mute your mic. Yeah. So the first question is, what do you think about? The glorification of drugs, because we know singers like Kurt Cobain and many other singers ha create an influence where people of our age think that being a druggie is quote unquote cool. And the second question was, how do you address the existence of certain influencers or bad, uh, bad influence? For example, the movie Sanju or many other movies where good people who do not intend to do drugs are influenced by certain members of the society to do drugs, right? What do you think about that and the glorification of drugs aspect? Because music and many other movies glorify drugs. For example, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's movie, uh, what Wolf of the Street, that movie, right. many movies glorify right. the idea of drugs, right? So what uh, do you so think before... about public interpreting that? All right. So before we move on to the answer, the discussion upon this, I'd like to mention that we won't be taking this uh, in the same line of debate uh, that we followed like one minute, one minute. We'll uh, yeah, exactly. recognize one person, they speak for a little while, we see a point that they have to offer here and then we'll, uh, then we'll keep alternating. Exactly. If, if Arth wants to uh, make a statement or if, uh, if or myself, we, we'll just butt in and uh, you know, just make like a statement or two, uh, just for, for uh, the purpose Can I of just make my statement first and leave because I actually have to go? Right all right, now. all right. No, so no, issue, no, issue. Make Did my you... statement fine, yes, fine, right fine. now. Fine. With your, your statement. All right. So, uh, when you Before talk that, about everyone mute your mics. All ah, right. Yes. Uh, with your carry on. Yeah. So, when you talk about glorification of drugs, yes, there exists a large amount of glorification of drugs when people think that it's cool, friends say it's cool, therefore we use it. And, but, still at the crux of it all, it doesn't justify anything. Because when you carry out an act which is illegal, the law does not care where the source came from. Sure, there may be factors, but it is your mental strength to hold you through that pressure, peer pressure or whatever it may be. And this, you know, constant need for being uh, noticed or being uh, acknowledged by people by being cool, that is a problem of the person itself and it should be addressed to the person individually. It is also what uh, also you need to understand when you gave the example of the movie Sanju, what you need to understand is here law enforcement fail in this situation. Peer pressure, of course, played a role, but it's the law enforcement which also played a big role, which failed because the person who supplied Sanju with the drugs, he had to acquire drugs through illegal means as well. So when it wasn't able to stop that line of change, that line of you know exchange between whatever the person was, when law enforcement failed there, when, the, when they could not find the person who was the source of the drugs, it caused more havoc and destruction on other people surrounding them. So this is actually a perfect example of how drug use from one person can affect other people. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, all right. Uh, Vidyut, thank you for joining in. Uh, all, right. Uh, so all right. This was fun. <laughs> thank you, Vidyut. Thanks. All right. Bye. See you. Bye bye. All right. Uh, so uh, we'll move on to the next person. Uh, person who has something to add. I think Avay had it, had his hands up. All right, Avay, carry on. Okay. So to start, start off for. Uh, uh, yeah, Avay, carry begin? on. We'll come back. Come come back to Shomujati. Seeing as both of them were. Okay. So yeah. in the uh, uh, in the current scheme of things, there is. Uh, yeah. So in the current scheme of things, a certain lot of celebrities as well as singers and movies, as Art said, which promotes or sort of glorifies the usage of drugs, and this is definitely a huge issue because it uh, minimizes or at least doesn't show the negative aspects of the drug of drugs and what actually happens to people once they become become addicted or hooked onto it. So I I believe in order to solve issues like this, the government has to play a huge role here. They have to enforce or make and enforce certain laws which when drug use is pro is shown in such movies or uh, uh, in uh, movies or songs or whatever it may be they uh, the artist or the creator must be required to include a disclaimer which ex which explains the negative aspects of drugs similar to the way uh, they are for uh, similar to the way they are meant to do when it comes to alcohol or tobacco being used in movies Furthermore, I believe the government has uh, has to uh, embark on an awareness campaign to teach people about what happens once they get hooked onto drugs and how difficult it is to come back out of that rabbit hole. Whether it be through reaching out to other influencers, who I'm sure will be happy to support a cause like this, or through any other way which the government deems feasible. Right. So right. until people are properly educated about actual effects of drug use, we can't uh, we can't uh, actually uh, negate such glorification of drugs. So. Right. Uh, I have a question to Avay following that line of discourse. Okay. Hello. Right, right, right. Can you hear me, Avay? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the question being, since you talked about how the government should raise awareness about like how they can get back from the trap of the drug, uh, don't you think society in general, for example, today if someone wants to improve and wants to get out of the drug addiction scenario but someone in society if someone in society spots them or sees them going for help then the society makes it worse for them don't you think that society plays a huge role and stigmatizes stigmatizes the whole situation for them which is why they cannot take help from the government or from the centers which are existing which will help them to cure their drug addiction Yes, sir. I think that's certainly a very important point because the uh, I think the focus of such uh, I think the focus of such awareness campaigns should be not only educating people about the negative aspects of drug use and the impact it can have on someone's life, but also to remove such stigma about how drug use is considered criminal or bad, uh, in and uh, transform it into. Uh, into people thinking about drug use as a genuine personal issue which people should attempt to deal with the the gov through these awareness campaigns the government has to also try to destigmatize the usage of drugs right and, I, uh, thank you sir the, yeah the uh, the concept right, of going so. to of trying to right. Right, uh, right. or come out of that sort of life i think i want to add uh, something to this uh, line of uh, discussion uh, that where are uh, the part of about the glorification of drugs and it is uh, a bit more related to the motion actually seeing as it said it should uh, drug use and drug use or abuse of it uh, should be uh, classified as a crime and not a mental health problem right so something i'd like to ask the house is that don't seeing as uh, drug abuse in itself is a crime. There's also certain other crimes. Like let's say when people are under the influence of drugs, uh, certain crimes like uh, disorderly behavior, they they or the tendency to uh, you know uh, commit uh, further uh, further illicit activities whilst under the influence. Should that be classified? Should that be taken? Uh, should that case be taken more leniently? 
against uh, against the this uh, man or woman in question considering that he or she was under the influence of uh, the drug or should the rep- uh, uh, the the uh, consequences be even greater considering they did both uh, the crime and uh, both uh, get under the influence illegally and commit a crime at the same time i think we'll uh, start with pranav exactly first. for example uh, exam uh, giving an exemplar to that question for example in conflict zones what happens is due to drug trafficking and due to drug consumption there is an increase in the rape cases which are happening right so how do you how do you bring in that aspect of the argument in your speeches or in your discourse or, or in yeah, the discussion you, you're having you, right now how you consider well, surreal, surreal, surreal. yeah surreal yeah. So, yes surreal absolutely i think Since I told you, maybe first first stage will be recorded and then we'll probably move on to second and third. Uh, I don't think we can hear you clearly. Show me that. Yeah. So my turn to speak on our first constructive now before we move on to the second. Yeah, yeah. We, we can we can start with you can address both parts of it. It's just adding to and adding another item of yeah. debate. Or so, or when you speak about the movie Sanju, if you have seen the movie to the end, you mentioned about how San San Sanjay Dutt is looking at the bigger picture, and the course is or uh, you mentioned that there is as you said the drug use and abuse. And in the end, the Sanjay Dutt himself questions his friend that why is he feel, giving him drug when he himself was consuming glucose, those packets of drugs. In the film, if you see. So the trend himself and him packets of glucose he was not a drug user or abuser okay so the question is how do you speak even till now at this stage basically so the trend never was a drug user or abuser or a drug addict he gets right so in what yes he gets the drugs in the ever to be so how is it how 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 is it constructed or this stem of your son son sanju Even relevant to the topic, the drug users or users are a threat to the society, influencing others. Because Sanjay Dutt's friend who did not get uh, himself toxified, himself toxic enough, and then do a hard down drugs in Sanjay Sanjay Dutt's not influencing in any way. He right. acted as a drug dealer. Himself did not um. do that. Uh, show me just the. I get your yeah, point. Yeah, we we understand the statement. Yeah, I think we'll move on to uh, Pranav. Pranav, he hasn't spoken yet. Right. So two of the two things I'd like to address. First is what Suryan said in in respect to with what Arth uh, said. This is this has been a major argument for proposition uh, opposition. We've been trying to explain this all this while that when they when they choose to abuse drug, that is where this game starts. Right. If you accuse that. Then, then comes in a whole new line of I did this and I did that under the influence of drugs, but I was under the influence because of this, and thus all of that needs to be excused. These things are just not feasible enough. The argument of proposition is is a very good concept, keep socially, but practically it just cannot be implemented. When you are talking about a motion, you have to think about the fact that can it be implemented in real world today or not? If it cannot, the motion simply cannot stand. That is the primary argument there. and secondly i'd like to address what abhya had said you keep talking about you know the negative aspect should be glorified negative aspect should be brought out government should government should basically explain to people and you know the stigma should be removed and there should be maybe uh, maybe they should also explain that you know it has bad effects and all that so you must know that a packet of cigarettes has a cancer diagnosed picture of a lung on it it is disgusting and it is very clearly visible this is what happens to you if you keep smoking does that prevent people from smoking no it does not you have to take into consideration that even if you mention something like this even if the government does explain that you know the the there are very there are a lot of negative effects of drug abuse drug abuse the ones who want to abuse it will continue to do so and these are things you have to take into consideration when you want to classify it as a mental health concern rather than a criminal offense well uh, i think before we uh, i i want to hear what ava has to say on this statement mm-hmm. but something i'd like to add here is that uh, about your point about the cigarette packets firstly i mm-hmm. think uh, the yes i i personally do agree that the picture may be quite uh, disgusting to uh, quoting you disgusting to look at yes but then i believe uh, it is um, it is put there to you know uh, notify the people that you know the, this is the implication of what or eventual implication of what happens if you continue to do this right that i understand your point there 
However, firstly, see, seeing as uh, seeing as uh, considering both his argument and something I have to add, uh, I just like to say that uh, smoking in most countries, or taking the example of India, smoking is completely okay. There is no restriction on smoking per se. Uh, that is very uh, prominent, right? So I don't think that is very that point is very applicable. I see what you're trying to say. However, the point there isn't very mm-hmm. applicable because it's it's you can over uh, yes, tobacco is a drug, but then it is not something that will necessarily get you yeah, into, into a crime unless you smoke on an aircraft or smoke in a. If, if, I, may, if I may clarify, if I may clarify. Right. So only I was not trying to draw a comparison between smoke and drug abuse directly, right? The right. only see, okay, if you take it, if you take all them individually for smoking, right? You're talking about he's trying to explain the negative aspect, right? And even though drug abuse is currently outside of the law, drug abuse that is, it is still currently happening, right? So you take that as a constant. People who want to abuse it will abuse it. That is a constant. The only parallel I'm trying to draw is the fact that even if you elucidate the negative aspects. Those who are going to abuse it will abuse it because that is just simply not a deterrent enough for people who have this line of line of thought. Somebody who is sensible enough to not abuse it are already educated of the negative aspect and they will not do it in the first place. That's all. Right. I see yeah. your point. So I have a question to pronounce. Yeah. Uh, so since you said that a person, you talked about the sense of a person not to consume drugs, right? Considering in major parts of India, most people are not educated and they are illiterate. How do you expect them to be yeah. sensible enough to not do something like this? Fair enough. So, okay, fine. So when you, when you come into that, like that line of thought, that also has largely to do with the, how do I put this? The largely to do with the inefficiency of our government right? due to the size of the population of our country. When you are specifically addressing that aspect, it brings into it brings into question a whole much much bigger picture, right? There is always going to be some problem linked with some problem, and you have to start solving it one step at a time. To to answer your question, the solution to that would be trying to work on the education aspect of it rather than putting forward the the proposal of you know having this treated yeah. as a mental health issue. Because just you understand my point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yourself accused the side government. You yourself accused mm-hmm. the side government of discussing utopian ideologies. So when you present your argument, don't you think your argument should be accommodative of what the situation is and not what the situation should be, ideally? So we are talking about a case where the situation is like this. People are not people are not educated. We let's not assume that what the government should do to educate people. But in this case, people are not educated, right? So what is your argument or what is your stance in the current situation or the current scenario that we are dealing with? Okay, fine. To answer your question, I'd like to uh, I'd like to put it to you like this. It is definitely it is definitely an issue that has not been able to be it's not even been able to uh, is not been tackled by even governments at large, right? Okay, I'd like to put it to you this way. If not, if not the argument of the opposition, right? If you take the argument of the proposition. How is treating this as a mental health issue going to help in any way the aspect of illiteracy when it comes to the people who use who abuse these substances? I understand your point when you say that since they are illiterate, they might not be able to, they might not have the as much of a know-how as the people who are literate. But even an illiterate person, they, they know the downfalls of smoking and all of that. And again, it comes down to the point of recreation. They don't have they don't have means to recreation, right. and that is just going to lead to more and more abuse. Yeah, the solution okay. is not basically point being the solution lies elsewhere and not in uh, classifying it as a mental health issue. Right. I think we exactly you yourself agreed just a second. You yourself yeah. agreed that they do not have any recreation, which is why they do that, right? So you admit that this is a situation where you cannot blame them. You have to blame the surroundings. Obviously no, no, no. Let, me, let me let me clarify. That. Obviously not. All I'm trying to say is when you put it in perspective with today's motion, right? It's simply when you put it in that perspective, point being that it's not the solution is not to classify it as a mental health problem. The solution is elsewhere. I'm not blaming them obviously for this. 
right right that's understandable i think we'll uh, take a take uh, avas avas statement avas uh, statement he had something to say and then i think we'll yeah, wrap just, up wrap up for today yeah avas i uh, i think i'm going to to get going right now thank thanks for the thanks a lot of uh, th- yeah th- th- thank you for joining for now yeah thank thanks. you right um uh, yes avas yeah so firstly when ranav said that the picture on cigarette the presence of that picture on cigarette packets and the presence of that doesn't reduce the rate of smoking and people continue to do it anyways i don't understand where on earth he got that or uh, that opinion from there is no actual research or factual basis behind him saying that just be, even though the uh, the picture is there people continue smoking uh, at the same rate he doesn't know that it's not uh, acting as a deterrent and that people aren't seeing that picture and understanding that this is going to be a problem furthermore once people see that picture and they see that okay this might happen to me after uh, uh, if i continue to smoke then i believe that it is uh, that then i believe that that is their personal decision their personal liberty i don't think the government has a ch- has the uh, overarching responsibility to enforce morality or good health upon the situation citizens if they understand the impact is going to have on them and they don't want to do anything about it and they want to continue despite understanding what's going to happen to them if they abuse it then obviously the government can't do anything about it again when it comes to a uh, dr- educating people about drug use if you tell someone hey hey listen this is what happens if you use drugs this is what's going to happen if you go down this rabbit hole and they still insist on going down it then there's nothing that the government can do to right. prevent them from doing right. that except give them a reliable path back to be the lead a life of normalcy because that's the responsibility of our government right i think we got that over yeah i think that's it uh thank you for joining in over i think uh arth and i will just discuss what we saw thank today you. Yeah, thank you Abhay. Thank you. Uh yeah, so well that wraps it up for today. Um before I say anything else, what did you think about uh, today's discussions? I don't think we can hear you Arth one second. Yes, carry on. Um yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So being very blunt about today's session yeah comparing it to the previous debate sessions the page had or the page organized it was not that of that good quality but definitely we had we had witnessed a good set of arguments coming from the participants but what i felt personally was the debate lacked humor the debate lacked a good use of wit a good use of language a good hold of language on the opponents and that's about it that was the arguments the framing of the arguments the presentation of logic was fine yeah i think i i agree with you uh, uh, to some extent as well i, I think that yeah a uh, very common item of uh, debates are uh, wit and humor and and the use of language to support their arguments exactly however at the same time i feel that uh, uh, this uh, this debate was also quite constructive although the arguments weren't presented the presentation was not as up to the mark as uh, said by the bar in the previous two however i feel uh, seeing the topic i think it uh, did justice to it in terms of how strong the arguments from both sides should be exactly and although 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 we haven't really tabulated our results yet i i i seem to be having yeah. a, str- a strong little uh, favor towards the opposition because i felt even though uh, both sides weren't as organized as before i think the opposition's presentation was mm. something a bit a bit uh, personally to my liking but oh, only yeah. time will tell after we tabulate the results same 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 yeah exactly well, also uh, the yeah. use of humor or the use of wit is very important in a debate why because it helps to make you different the That's crowd right. will get bored at a point of time and they need yeah. something which lightens the weight which lightens the arguments which are coming yeah, instead of heavy vocab or instead of heavy words you can have 
light joke which will light in the environment that's it exactly. there's a difference between yeah. a debater and a performer and that creates the difference i i completely agree with you there because i think the whole i personally to me the point of a debate is to present an argument on a topic and you know come to a consensus on what this what it is see both perspectives and you know try to exactly. come to a decision and if the people won't hear what you have to say there is no point of it so if the the viewers viewing today get bored of what they saw today i believe that certain parts of the debate wasn't as exactly. effective as it should have been i believe that the parts where they made their strong cases made those bold statements i think that is what caught the view of the audience that is what shaped their opinion on the matter yeah i completely exactly. agree with you there yeah well i think we'll exactly. uh, yeah i think we'll wrap up uh, wrap up for now thank you very much for joining in earth i hope yeah i hope we see you again in the in the near future not an issue not an issue yeah yeah, yeah. definitely yeah, yeah. thank for you for sure all right see you yeah Well ladies and gentlemen I can safely say that we had a very productive debate today some very strong arguments uh, were made and uh, although it was a tough time to decide between first and second I think Arthur and I came to the right decision in terms of the gap between first and second which was quite close but uh, I believe that for uh, for simply the fact that uh, the person first just made some much better arguments in terms of supporting them and delivering it with uh, actual wit and exp- expression that that's required in a debate as we said earlier it he just uh, said uh, said the right things in the right way to you know convince us to show us the way he said it and just that little you know uh, coming down to it and you know actually getting his point through to us other than just putting it out there for us to infer was the reason why he, he was separated between first, uh, separated into first and not second but you're waiting for the results and i will give it to you now in third position we had avatul sian who was who performed well as well congratulations ava in second position we had vidyut chatrapadhyay and in first position we had of course none other than pranav bhandari who again performed exceedingly well and yeah uh, i mean i'm i was very impressed by uh, i personally was very impressed uh, i think so was art by pranav bhandari's uh, uh, arguments so yeah uh, kudos to all of you and i think we'll see you on the next one uh, I, i hope you stay tuned like the video if you liked it and yeah uh, subscribe and keep notifications on because we're uh, putting on more debates uh, uh, every week uh, at least once or twice so uh, we've got content uh, content this long for you it's very entertaining and uh, it's going to be equally productive So yeah I think we'll catch you in the next one that's so that was and yeah we'll see you in the next one